Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk to you about adding Drop Shadow inside of DaVinci Resolve 17 and show you a few different ways that you can accomplish it. So the first thing to know about Drop Shadow is that when you add Drop Shadow, it's going to be based on the shape of the image that you're trying to apply it to. So generally, if you're using Drop Shadow, you want to apply it to a PNG image or a title screen. So those shapes will be capable of applying a shadow. But if you have something like an entire video clip like this, and you tried to shrink it and apply a drop shadow, it would apply it to the entire video frame, not individual objects in the frame. So it's not that easy to say, take this tree here and cast a shadow. So if you are using a PNG image that you brought in, so I'll take this logo and drop it into video track two. Let's go over here in the timeline. Then you'll note that this image is completely separate from the underlying video track. So that's really important. We have a separation between our graphic and everything else. So we apply the drop shadow to the graphic, and then it's going to match the shape of this graphic. So one place you can find drop shadow without going to the fusion page is to use the effects library. So up here in the top left, and then you go down to open effects, and you can find drop shadow under resolve effects stylize. So I'm going to drag this onto this video clip or really the image rather. And once you let go and you apply it, you have the drop shadow effect here. So if you want to edit settings about it, click on the image and then go over to the inspector effects tab and you'll see the settings for drop shadow. So if you want it to be very visible, increase your shadow strength, the closer you get to 1.0, the less transparent it's going to be. If you want to be able to more clearly see the shape of the original image, you can lower the blur down. So that'll be making the shadow more of just a direct copy of the original image, but behind it. And you can change the distance if you want the shadow to be cast further out or closer to the original image. So we can also apply a drop shadow to text. I'll go to titles here and let's go up to the top. So text plus nodes are going to be easily customizable inside of the timeline. So I'm going to take text plus. I'm going to drop it right here in front of the first image. And let's go to where it shows up in the timeline and click on it. So I'll just change some basic settings here. Let's change the text and I will change the font and increase the size. So if we make it big enough, it should be really easy to see the drop shadow. So adding drop shadow to text, you could of course just use the open effect stylize and drop that onto this clip right here. Or if you want more advanced settings, you can just click on the text plus, go over to the video tab in the inspector, and then click on shading here. When you're in shading, choose select element one and change that to three, and then check enabled for black shadow. So when you use the shading black shadow on a text plus element, you have a few more settings available to you. So if you want to reduce the blurriness, you can go down here to softness, and you can reduce that on an X and Y value at the same time. Just make them match if you uh, don't have a reason to make it more blurry on X or more blurry on Y. Uh, you can change the position if you want it to be cast further out or close together. So offset X or Y are kind of your main options here. And usually drop shadow is just going to be down and to the right. And then you have less used settings like if you want to rotate the shadow or you want it to be slanted with shear like so. And you can increase the size if you want the drop shadow to actually be bigger or smaller than the original text. But once again, those would be less commonly used. So uh, that's really easy when you use a text plus node directly on the timeline. But what if you're using a fusion title? So I'll go a little further on. Let's go to titles and the effects library. And I'll scroll down here to fusion titles. So let's just grab one that looks good. Let's do horizontal line reveal, sure. I'll drag that onto the timeline. I'll click into it and we see our two areas. So we have a title text up here. We have a line that goes through the center and we have bottom text. But when we click on it and we look at the inspector, you probably are not going to see settings for drop shadow. Uh, some of them might have it. It's kind of depending on what controls were added to this title when it was created. But for all the settings you don't see here, you can find more by jumping over to the Fusion page because these are Fusion titles. So they're built out of individual nodes combining together to create a full title effect. So to jump over to the Fusion page for a title, you click on the Fusion title and then there is this Fusion button over here. So you click here and it jumps to the Fusion page and you're probably gonna see a node group. So horizontal align reveal looks simple until you open it up. So let's double click here and uh, we're gonna see a whole bunch of nodes. 
So it might be looking a little bit overwhelming, but if all you're looking to do is play around with drop shadow on each of the text areas, you don't have to go too far into it. So usually titles are going to have their basic text created using a text plus node. So that's going to look just like it did on the edit page when you just drag text plus into the timeline. If you click on one of these text plus nodes and then you go to the inspector, double click on the name if you don't see all the settings, then if everything goes well, you should be able to see those same text plus settings. So we can go over to shading just like we did on the edit page, drop down from select element to three to find the default black shadow shading element and enable it. And then you have the same settings that we did on the edit page. So if we want to reduce the softness and uh, change the position, and you can always zoom in, control middle mouse wheel if you want to see what this is doing exactly. So I'll lower the softness down and we adjust the position, kind of whatever you like. Then uh, that would be how you can just come in here and add drop shadow on one of the nodes on the fusion page. So we can do the same thing with the upper text. And uh, because these are separate nodes, we can actually have them have their own set of drop shadow settings. So on the upper text, I'll just click on that, go to shading, click on the drop down, do three, enable it. And then we can go down here to softness position and uh, change some of the settings. So maybe we want this text to be way out to the right. So there we have our top drop shadow. I'll lower the softness down a bit as well. Maybe add some glow, which seems to kind of expand on the uh, shadow, making it pop out a little bit further. Now that doesn't look great, but you can see that this is definitely clearly different than the bottom shadow. So uh, to show another example of what you could do, when you have multiple text elements, and if you just want everything to just have the same drop shadow, then let's just grab another title that has multiple text elements and drop it onto the timeline. So we'll click here. You can see it has a left text and a right text. Let's jump to the Fusion page now, just like we did before. And we could go and edit it in this node group over here. But if you want to keep it simple, we can just add a Resolve Effects Stylize onto this node graph. So with this node group selected or an individual node, if you had a media in, if you want to add a node right in front of it, you just have this node or node group selected. You right click on the line in front of it. So it, you're looking for it to glow blue like this. And then you right click, you go to add tool, you go down to stylize, drop shadow. And then this gives you a drop shadow node that is just like the resolve effects stylized drop shadow that you would find on the edit page. It's just now it's represented as a node on the node graph. So you can click on this and we can change settings about the drop shadow. So I'm going to increase the drop shadow strength and let's decrease the blur so we can see it very clearly. Um, and then you can change the distance. So I do want to point out that it's not always so convenient to use the drop shadow node like here, because once you have this node group outport everything into this drop shadow node, that's going to combine the line, the text and the right text as well into one thing when it's coming out here. So that's why this line ends up with the drop shadow. Sometimes you'd want that. Sometimes you wouldn't. The easiest thing to do would just be to add the drop shadow twice on the left text node and the right text node as shading. Uh, but another thing you could do is reorganize this so that the drop shadow comes in after you combine the left and the right text, but before the line node is added in. But with this particular node graph, that would be pretty tricky to actually do, because as you can see, the line is one of the first things that comes into the merges. So you'd need to reorganize everything. So for this particular example, I would definitely just add it as shading on left and right text. So just to show that this drop shadow node ends up being the same as if you added it on the edit page, I'm going to select this, cut it away from the node graph so we don't have any more drop shadow here. Let's go to the edit page. I'm going to click on this title and we're going to just drag and drop the open effects stylize drop shadow. So let's find it under stylize drop shadow, drop it on the text and we can see all of the elements get that drop shadow effect. So if I go to effects here, increase the strength, uh, decrease the blur and adjust the distance. You can see that the drop shadow still applies to all three elements there. So it, it really is the same. It's just a matter of where you want to add the drop shadow effect in. Easier to do on the edit page, but you have more control over exactly when the drop shadow takes place if you do it on the node graph of the fusion page. So the last thing I want to emphasize in this video is that when you add a drop shadow to a video clip, 
that it's going to give you a box shape because that is the shape of video. So if I take, let's say this clip over here and I put it in the timeline, uh, let's click a little further and I'm going to shrink this video down so that the background video can show. So I'm going to take the zoom and I'm going to shrink it. Now let's add drop shadow to this video clip. Okay, so you see that this video clip is a box and outside of that box we have a drop shadow. Now, sometimes you might want this for like a cool picture and picture effect, but whatever we change here, whether we increase the shadow strength or decrease the blur, we're just going to get a box shadow shape. So it would be pretty impractical to, so it would be pretty impractical to try to add shadow to individual elements uh, from the video clip when it's all composed as one thing. To do that when it's already at the video clip stage would probably mean you'd just be cutting away certain areas, masking out shapes, like if you wanted to have a shadow for this entire tower or colors on your screen. So maybe you get the darker areas and those would be the ones casting the shadows. Uh, but generally that would look terrible. Um, what you would really do if you wanted to have shadows like that uh, would probably be like if you're in Blender and then you are composing a video at that point in time. So you render with shadows on to a video clip. But once it's already a video clip, you're kind of stuck with this having a drop shadow that's just going to be a box. So do keep that in mind that when you're doing drop shadow and DaVinci Resolve, usually you're talking about adding it to a logo, a PNG image or text in general. But if you do want a video clip to pop out like this, look a little bit more 3D with a drop shadow, then you can do that as well. So in a nutshell, that is basically everything you're going to need to know about drop shadow inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I hope this video was helpful for all of you out there. Thank you for watching to the end. I've been Chris and I will see all of you in my future video content.